Welcome back everyone to Hearthstone Masters Korea Season 1. Trevor and Doa here, and we are preparing for the second uh, quarterfinal match of this week. Here, yeah, that's Tom right. Time versus Palmblad. Time versus Palmblad. And I, I feel personally like this one is going to be perhaps a bit more one-sided coming into it than the other really? one was. Yeah, I mean, I huh. think Time played okay versus Equestra, but I think Palmblad played very well against Rini Hour. So I think Palmblad took down the stronger opponent. I think uh, Palmblad had very intelligent deck choices based on his opponent. Uh, he played them out extremely well. And so I, I, and we saw in the fan poll too, they are giving Palmblad a little bit of an edge as well. But I think if I had to pick, I would definitely bet on Palmblad here. That said, you know, we've only ever seen Time play once. Yeah. So we really don't know a whole lot about this guy yet. Yeah, so. We will, um, we will get a little bit of a preview of both of these players here, Time and Pomblad. They're round of 16 matches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. There's Time. Had some crazy luck but on both sides, though, in that matchup, so it was fair, I'd say. And then there's Pomblad with a dramatic win against Rini Hour. I mean, he beat Rini Hour in the second. His second win of that match was with the 28-28 Death Lord. Like, that, that actually happened. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this match. And, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, like, Tom Vlad, super, super top deck there and whatnot. But the fact of the matter is that he had a reason for bringing that deck, right? It wasn't yeah. like, um, it wasn't like Jungle Rambo, but I was like, well, these are the only decks I know how to play. Like, so I right. brought them because they work on ladder. He said, well, it was a strategic choice. And he basically took the high risk, high reward route and he got the reward. Right. I mean, he said, he didn't just say, oh, I thought this deck was pretty good. He said, I think this deck is very good, specifically against handlock and specifically against the type of handlock that Rainier likes to play. So, yeah, very intelligent choice. But there is time, of course, taking out Equester in our very first match of the season. Took him down 3-2. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty nervous, but time versus Palm, but both of them basically kind of, they, they brought a fresh breath of air, I think, to the Hearthstone scene here in Korea. I mean, they were both pretty dramatic. Like, they were very emotional when they played. Right. Uh, time had a little bit of luck to help him, but also very just consistent play in his matchup. And like we said, Pomblad bringing in some interesting points to take note here in Conquest mode specifically, like as a whole. That's what yeah. I really liked about him. You know, Pomblad, like we said, prepared very, very well against Rini Hour. But Rini Hour, there's a lot of information about this guy out there. He's True. a very popular very player. Fair. Plays in a lot of events. You can do a lot of research on him. Not as much against time right now, so you know, has Palm Blab been able to prepare as well? That's I, I think kind of my big question. He is also, of course, a member of Team Godsiho, which also which already saw two of its members get through to the semifinals. Yeah. Solsiho and Look Sam. So yeah. uh, Godsiho as a as a team just kind of cleaning up it's, this tournament so far. It's kind of interesting because the members of Godsiho are all these like members who wanted to be at the top last year. They yeah. were in other teams, like a lot of them were in Golden Coin and whatnot. A lot of them and then they said, coin. hey, let's go out, let's do our own thing. And here they are making a big name for their team. They are like the best team in Korea right now, yeah. I think, hands down. And you've got a couple outliers like Kranish and Rini Hour on other teams, but Gazio, top team in Korea at the moment. Well, let's find out which decks Time and Pomblad chose to bring here for their quarterfinal week. Yeah. First time here. Well, of course, the only information we have from him is uh, the offline play here at Masters Korea. And he's actually bringing the same classes that he brought Ooh. in the round of 16. It's going to be Hunter, Druid, and Paladin. I'd and say uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty gutsy, especially when you've had extra time, you know, like a week mm. or so to bring new decks. And What's going to be really gutsy if it's a, if it's Dragon Pound? Dragon Pound, I know. I was, I was wondering. <laughs> I was like, huh. I mean, some people are arguing that they've made it work a little bit. I but doubt it. Most are out of the jury for that one. Oh, okay, Palmblad switching things up a bit today. Warlock, Hunter, and Druid. See, now, if he never plays Priest again, he'll just maintain that 100% win rate with Priest, which <laughs> like nobody priest else has. <laughs> yeah. the world. Top Priest world. <laughs> you know what I want to see? I want to see Palmblad. He's like, oh, you thought I didn't bring anything sneaky like that, but it's Gazrilla. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? The, I know. Go for the combo win It's here. Mech Hunter, but it's <laughs> it's a better one than uh, we've seen before, maybe. Probably not. <laughs> Mech Hunter's very good. <laughs> All right, well. Bane Death Hunter. Oh, well, hey, some people are trying to bring that back a little bit more control Hunter here. I got beat by it on the ladder today. I'm ashamed to say. It can be good. It can be good. If you get the perfect hand, it can be I've, very I've good. I've had one steal my, uh, what, Malganis with the Sylvanas oh, there. <laughs> well, here we go. Set number one between Time and Palmblad. Real beginning of this match. 
Driver's Bobat. Oh, Hunter v. Hunter starting right. things out. Oh, <laughs> hey. Well, if uh, that was ever a tell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I've got this funny feeling that uh, Palmblad is running face hunter here. You know, sneaking suspicion. I think there's a high probability, but on the flip side, I mean, a little bit aggressive, but gearing more towards that mid rangey feel here. I mean, it could also just be kind of face hunter and then a boom, Dr. Boom at the end, just to balance things out a little bit. Sure. Uh, we'll see if we see a high mains or not in Time's deck. Ooh. Really Morgan quick Infiltrator. I mean, this is pretty much straightforward the face hunter that everyone's been playing against on ladder. Oh, yeah. And everyone who hasn't been playing against it has been playing it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Chopper's already got Golden Hunter, so his uh, his reign of terror is over. Yeah, so I don't have to play <laughs> the new Thank PRM goodness. face hunter anymore. That's <laughs> one out of the way. <laughs> All right. Haunted Creeper. Yeah, I mean, he's the point early against face hunter. Very wise. Well, yeah. We'll just we'll just run this through turn by turn. Pretty straightforward here. Mad Scientist? And, you know, good question. I like it. I think for now, that's the safer play is better. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is you need to be a little bit careful here because when you see that coined out Haunted Creeper, a lot of times it's because there's a knife juggler in the hand. Right. And so he's like, uh, I don't know about this, but he's going to go for it anyway. You've got to get something going on the board. So he's just taking the risk. Luckily for him, unless it gets top deck, which it does not, time does not have that knife juggler. Yep, and the high main there, so much more mid-range deck here for time. Yeah, it uh, looks like it's pretty similar to what he played in week number one. Yeah. Man, that would be the ultimate mind game. He's like, everyone has a week to bring new decks. I it's will like bring the exact All the Blackrock Mountain decks. cards come out. He's like, nope, not going to use them. <laughs> ah, the silence. That's, That's pretty silence. solid. All right. You know, the Mad Scientist doesn't have a lower jaw, so you'd think it'd be hard for him to say anything. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Yeah, really. His tongue's just kind of hanging down there. That's one of the undead models in World of Warcraft. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I never noticed. The more you know. Yeah, pretty crazy. I wonder if they knew. Oh, what is that? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And, oh, a circle of healing here. Oh, I think that's uh, referring to the top deck from Palmblad, where he topped in the circle of healing oh, to get the yeah, 28 yeah. <laughs> inner fire. Anduin's like, LOL, <laughs> top decked you. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't, mean, I couldn't tell, but yeah, that was that was a uh, anime Randuin there. Yeah, anime. <laughs> Look at this, maximum damage. Okay. I mean, I think at at this point, Pomblet probably assumes at mid-range, but still no like big tells, right? Because time could just be playing like, all right, well, you know, I have the coin, maybe I'll just try to counter it here. Yeah, well, if it is, I mean, if it is face, then he's got a very slow start. Yeah, exactly. So either way, Pomblet's going to be feeling pretty good, but we know it's not quite face from time. It's not quite face time. It's not quite face time. No. It's just a hangout. Yep. <laughs> ah, we should deserve some sponsorship money for that one. Huh? He might actually get to use Quick Shot for the uh, for the for draw. the draw too. Yeah, I think he's he. I think he wants to be greedy about that. Um, and so far, he has a good shot at it. He is racing really effectively at this point. Yeah. And the thing is, he's putting out stuff that time has to deal with. Yeah. There's Three a knife juggler finally, damage. but he doesn't really. Doesn't have enough mana to use it with anything at the moment. Might just go with the piloted shredder. I think that's what you're gonna do, unless you want a hero power. But it's it's a little bit late, uh, a little bit late rather, to start racing them yourself. I feel like yeah. you just need to get that board control back and try see, to make a swing that way. See, you kill, kill up the here too. Ah, okay. I see. What you mean. Because. All right. Well, actually, maybe if he's running Freezing Trap, it might not have been as helpful. But if you're yeah. running Explosive, that just shuts down Phase Hunter so much. Well, I'd imagine he's probably running Freezing in this. Yeah, it was more mid-range. Yeah, yeah, because it is mid-range. So okay, so the two health is a little bit more worth it. Yeah. I can, I can hear it. Oh, I can't. Oh, the glare. Oh no. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, he says, oh, it's uh, for Go Rush. Yeah, he says, rookie comedian Go Rush fighting. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a rookie comedian. He's a professional comedian. 
Does that mean he's a rookie cat? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it. He's he's a pretty veteran caster, of course. Has been casting multiple games. Yeah, quite also some time. A famous StarCraft One player. Yeah, very very famous Brood War player. Well, let's see. The explosive trap is out there for Palmblad. He would be giving his opponent a trap by putting it down there. Obviously, the mad scientist would get killed by it. Doesn't have anything to really activate that kill command. I mean, he could quick shot the piloted shredder, but then he wouldn't get the draw. So he's just going to use the kill command on it instead. Probably going to see the hero power come out. Yep. Just facing, yeah. He's oh, wow, just right. face, yeah. Well, got a race. He of started course. the race, right? You can't turn back now. Ah, and so the explosive trap will be kind of his last strike. Yeah, exactly. Hey, and with a with a board like this, it may actually work pretty well. I think Palmblad is in pretty good shape here, especially. Okay, well, there's the beast. Oh, well, here we go. Here's the draw, too. Yep. Well, actually, maybe you just hero power here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can probably use it next turn anyway. Because I think... It works best, especially when you've come this far. It works best when you use it for a draw for the kill, right? Because yes. right now it just kind of sits in your hand and doesn't really do much else. So. Right. He's going into seven mana. He's going to be able to play anything that's in that deck unless it's uh, Dr. Boom or something. Or play it, you know, and play Quick Shot, unless yeah. it's Dr. Boom or something. So you've got five guaranteed damage to face right now, assuming yep. they trigger the trap, which you usually have to if you're a hunter. And then two more seven. You know, he could actually play Dr. Boom first, get the three knives, then go to face, and then see what the boom bots do, you know? Well, well he, he can't do it yet, right? Because he's at Oh, he's at six, six mana, mana, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Small monitor, like we said. Yeah, the, the it top really is spot, it. spot is pretty hard to see sometimes, but there you go. All right, well. I'm just playing it safe. He knows that that stuff would die to explosive trap anyway, so you might yeah. as well use it for board clear, right? Fair enough. But uh, this could certainly be lethal for Palmblad next turn, depending on what the draw is. Right, that's a snake trap, okay. Ah, okay. Two traps Ooh, there. Oh, okay. All right, just wants to deny <clears throat> as much damage, excuse me. Well, it denies any sort of arcane golems coming in, right. and stuff like that, so it is it is pretty big. Oh, oh. Morgan Infiltrator. Well, you can play that. What's the draw gonna be from Quick Shot? This could be big. Yes, it is. Three damage and unleash oh. the hounds. Not enough. <laughs> oh boy, that's risky. So he'll hero power. All right. And so three health remaining. So explosive oh, so trap. he does have an explosive, but I guess he wow, thought the risk each? was too big early on to try to fish for that with the scientist. Interesting. Although I don't know, if I were him, I would have liked to see the fish. I think if he got it earlier, it would have helped him a lot here. Certainly could have. Well, let's see. So if you play the Explosive Trap, you can't play either of the other two cards in your hand, which is kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. But if you play something like Dr. Boom, you're definitely dead. Uh, well, not definitely dead, but most likely dead. because well, we know he's definitely dead because of the Unleash the Hounds. Here. Right, but he's got to know that Unleash is a distinct possibility. There's another Kill Command. There's probably yeah. another a Quick Shot even, maybe. So there's a lot Ooh. of ways that Palm Blad can kill him. I wonder if because of that, time will just play Dr. Boom. Because, all right. Because I was wondering, because it's like, if he draws a spell, you're dead anyway. Yeah. So he might have just, because this, all right. Well, he's down I mean, to six. It, at least this way, he makes it. <laughs> but there's the other quick shot. Yeah, easy decision there. And Palm Blad going to take the hunter versus hunter here in game number one. Hey, man, got to give it to time. He brought it pretty close, down to six health yeah. on Palm Blad. And, and you know, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, going for the trap at the end works, too, because he had the Shredder there, so it could have actually just triggered for the kill for him next turn. Well, Palm Blood just going all out from turn number one there. Mm -hmm. To the face. The real lesson on how to play face hunter. Literally to the face. Yeah, pretty all much. And in a situation like this, you know, generally you see in CCGs the slightly slower deck have the advantage. But in a game like Hearthstone, where, you know, you can go for the face and nothing's going to stop you unless there's a taunt out, then, in situations like this, the quicker deck actually has yeah. a little bit of an edge, but that usually just applies to Hunter versus Hunter. Exactly, yeah. Some other times there, there's a or lot like, more nuances. Or like Backspace Rogue versus Miracle back in the day. Fair enough. Yeah, actually, that's another old matchup. But we're yeah. going right into set number two. Both players are eager to jump right in. And it's Warlock versus Druid. Wow, we are moving right around. Now, is it going to be Zoo? 
Probably. Uh, or not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> guess not. I'm wondering if it's actually just even uh, the older styles of handlock here. It's got Emperor Tharzan in there, which is going to be in everything. Yeah. I mean, especially if it's an old handlock, it's very good for the Giants and, you know, the Drakes and whatnot. Sure. Zombie the, Chow? Yeah, uh, the Zombie Chow, I think, is what tips me that it's got a couple more Giants than maybe you might expect in current Demon Locks. You know, and the, the Zombie Chow isn't the greatest thing against Druid, but, I mean, you might as well throw it out there if you've got nothing else really in your hand. There's one of the Molten Giants. We'll see right. what he life taps into. Trump roll. Ooh, Mountain Giant. Yeah, so he's going for the full Giant spectacle here. He's going full Giant. I wonder how worth it it would be if you're playing Handlock on ladder, but because there's so many zoos, you also put in the Sea Giants. <laughs> you have six Giants in your game. Jeez. <laughs> you I don't play know. like three of them on one turn. <laughs> By the time you're able to play them, though, doesn't that mean you've lost control of the board completely yeah. anyway? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Shadow Flame is a better uh, spot in the deck. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. He's going to use that here power to clear it out, it looks like. Yeah. Get yourself uh, a bit of health back. Yeah, so I mean, for time, I've always found Druid versus Handlock kind of interesting because it's it's still ri it's written out so clearly, right? You want to keep the Handlock around 15 health, and your combo does around 15 damage. Yeah, fairly straight up. Yeah, and you know you want to keep uh, Keeper or something like that for a Silence at the very yeah. end. It, it's yeah, it's uh, I think it's one of the more very like where the wind conditions are very clear to both sides oh boy and we are going to see a very quick ancient of lore here aren't we okay well yeah i mean he doesn't have some ideal plays he's got his tech cards in his hand so yeah he's gonna want to draw into some of them he's gonna play turn four five i mean it's a lot to use on it but it's a pretty good cycle <laughs> wild growth and uh, another ancient lore okay well could have been maybe some more useful cards right now but either way it's not bad to have that five five on the board yeah all right, well, there's, there's a combo. Yeah, there's a combo, so. Uh, um, you know, usually, like you said, you want to save that science, but I think this is such a prime opportunity. Yeah, I agree with you this time. I mean, because what else would you play? I guess you could wild growth and hero power, but. Yeah, just clear that out. Nothing wrong with giving them a little health at this point. He's going to take it right back away again. <laughs> Malfurion giveth and Malfurion take the way. Yeah, here we go. Mountain Giant coming out. Should just get big game hunter. Yep. You know, I mean, where is the big game hunter going to mount like the head of this mountain giant exactly? <laughs> Does the big game hunter use every part of the mountain giant? Maybe. I don't think so. <laughs> I think we need to make mountain giant hunting illegal. <laughs> I think a lot of people want to make big game hunting illegal in Hearthstone. <laughs> I've seen some articles about that. You know, big game hunter going for the Mountain Giant. It's, it's kind of like that. What was it? Um, Shadow of the Colossus. Was it? I've never, I've never played it, but that's what, what the I've old heard. PlayStation Two game where you like climb up the giant things. Is that yeah? That game was amazing. I've by heard. The way. I've heard it was spectacular. It was extremely, extremely good. Never owned that console. It was definitely not as easy as playing a big game hunter. <laughs> It's okay though, because I can play Hearthstone all the time I want on my smartphone. It's pretty awesome. It's, I was it's playing on the really subway good. here. Yeah. So, Emperor Tharzan would give you a lot of cheaper creatures, but he'd immediately die. It looks like, uh, looks like Palm Blood just wants to thin things out. Because man, if there's a Savage Roar in that exactly. hand, he's just dead anyway. I think so. Yeah, he need now. He just needs to start fighting for survival. Yeah. And there is a Savage Roar in that hand. Yep. We do know. All right, well, time, I mean, yeah, you pretty much just kill it, put out Lothab, Lothab yeah. Yeah, Lothab. Or, or even yeah, Asian Lord would probably Lothab to guarantee that, you know, you can try to get the lethal next turn. I, I like the Lothab just because you deny any sort of spells exactly. that are going to mess you up, you know? Yeah. yeah, that does. Unless they've got some taunts, which it's unlikely that they'll, they'll have any notable amount. That sure. does pretty much guarantee it. Yeah, even if the Sludge Belcher goes down, I think time's going to burn through that pretty quickly. And even if he heals for eight, he won't have any taunts. Well, time can also play the combo next turn with the coin. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's pretty much got this one won. Wow, look at this. Wow, this we have packed, man. packed house today, which is, you know, we were a little bit concerned because a lot of these players, again, like we said, weren't as well known. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, Hearthstone is just getting really huge in Korea. It's it's such, such a relief. <laughs> yeah.
It's pretty awesome. Here we go. I, I'm not even going to bother calculating the sanity because it's well over no, 30. Man. This is beyond math. It's beyond <laughs> sanity. <laughs> it's a savage roar. Force oh, of man. nature combo. Yeah, Pomblad already has his hands on his yeah, arm. He's, he's like, like oh, whatever happens. You got natured. Oh, well, that's much. more than enough damage for time here. Good game. Yep. 31 damage total on the board. Yeah, so we're tied up. Time taking game number two. Yeah, tied 1-1, one, one. and this time the players won't be able to rush into their next game because we're going to take a break. Ah, I see. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of like that. I really do like Pomblet's mentality in the tournament because just now, too, right, he already put his arms down, and he was like, all right, well, you know, that happens. Druids, that's what... You know, that's why you play Druids. That's yeah. okay. I was already up 1-0. I'm going to tie it up. He looks like, all right, well, you know, you got you to just expect to lose at least one game when you're coming into these tournaments. Oh, it's so it's it's really hard to 3-0 in Conquest. Yeah. So, yeah, you go into it expecting to lose a couple. So, no problem there. I mean, essentially, it's a best of three now. And yeah, he does look still very concerned about the upcoming games. But yeah. Hunter and Paladin for time, Druid and Warlock for Priest, but for now it's going to be a quick commercial break. For Pomblad, you mean, not Priest. Pomblad, he didn't yeah. become the Priest himself. He is the Priest now. <laughs> All right, we'll be back after a short <laughs> break, guys, for set number three between Time and Pomblad. The winner of this match will go up to face Flurry in the winner's match on this side of the quarterfinal brackets. Don't go anywhere. Masters Korea Season 1 continues.
Welcome back, everyone, to the quarterfinals of Hearthstone Masters Korea Season 1. We have Ty versus Palm Vlad. They were tied 1 1, as you will find out here in the first two sets. Owls and spiders and mad scientists, oh my. <laughs> typical. Base hunter. Hunter versus hunter. Yeah, typical hunter story here. Yep. So, Palm Vlad basically doing all of his damage to the enemy player, more or less ignoring the minions. Yeah. And that is how you win a game with Face Hunter. Yeah, time did everything he could, though. Brought it down pretty close. Yep. But in the end, what really mattered was that Palm Vlad drew his second quick shot. Yeah, Not this he one. Had, he had so much stuff to draw into that, you yeah. know, it really, pretty much anything he was going to pull out of his deck at that point was going to give him the win with only three health for time remaining. It was uh, pretty easy for Palm Vlad to take that one. Game number two was a bit of a different story, though. Yeah, Palm Vlad brought out his handlock, whereas time went for the Druid. Decides he can shelf his Hunter for a little bit here. Yep. So much early damage done by time, and, and you know, getting down to that sweet spot around 13, around uh, 15 health or yeah. so. Yeah, getting I mean, that nice silence on the Twilight Drake. I think that was so smart, keeping the Nation of Lore just at full health. He also had the early big game Hunter, which seemed like a dead card, but then of course with handlocks, you got those early giants coming out. Yeah. There we go. Just <laughs> absolute overkill. Yep. Sludge Belcher did not matter at all. Now with that much presence on the board, that much damage coming in, and that leaves us with a tie series. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the times where Handlock can feel really rough, where you, you basically have your hands tied because you didn't get a Shadow Flame. But that's the yeah. only thing that can really save you from an early Druid board. So we'll find out what these two players will be Flurry, or not Flurry, Flurry already won his match earlier today, but time. We'll see him again. Yeah, we will see him again in the winner's match later tonight. Time has already won with his Druids, a Hunter or Paladin, and Palm Vlad, Warlock or Druid. Yeah, I really Druid. wonder if it's Dragon Paladin. I <laughs> hope it is, but we're about to find out, guys. Time to get into game number three. Time versus Palm Vlad. It's game time. Nice. I love that screen. It's, Don't it's you? a pretty good screen. It gets you all excited for what's about to come. I know. Actually, I do really like the UI in this game. It is. It's pretty yeah. good. It's very clean. I, You know, I was actually surprised at just how, how and I'm not just saying this, too, because I was going into the phone version very skeptical. I'm like, all right, there's a lot of stuff. How are you going to make this work? But honestly, like, it's it's I about like, as good as I think you can make it. Yeah, on, I like the how they reallocated the hand. Yeah. Um, although, you know, some people are saying, and I agree, since I don't have, like, the newest of phones, maybe if you could, like, turn off at least golden card animations, mm. you know, that, that, that yeah. would help my phone a little bit. I think you're right. I think that would be a good option. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, this is very the early stages. Even yeah. after in internal testing, it's going to be kind of rough. It's not a bad start. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. it plays fine. A lot of people are saying. It's a good question for uh, for Palmblad here. Against Hunter, do you keep that Molten Giant? There's a good chance you're going to get low, and he's going to go ahead and hold on to that. Ooh. It's a little bit brave. Okay, he does draw yeah. into the Twilight Drake. Personally, especially since you don't have the coin, um, and you didn't like have a Shadow Flame or anything in your hand, I personally I'm of you know, you know a place where I would avoid that. I would send it back. The more I think about it, too, actually, he knows this is a slower hunter. Yeah. He knows this is more mid rangey. Yeah, so, yeah. in light of that, I, I think he probably should have thrown it back. But like you mentioned, it's not going to matter because yeah. he's got both Twilight Drakes and a Mountain Giant. Pretty no. much. If it was face, I think it'd be an okay keep. But either way, like I said, plenty of stuff in the hand, not a lot to worry about. So what's it going to be? Knife juggler, perhaps for time. I mean, you have one of each trap, and Palm Black Apparently knows that so. too, because he saw all three traps activated last last game. It's kind of a cool little uh, decision to make actually with this deck to really keep your opponent guessing. If you have one of each, then they really have. Yeah, so no idea what's coming at them. Yeah, even if they know that you have one of each, I mean, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah, you know when you combine the life tap damage with the mad scientist, it's actually a pretty significant amount of damage coming out from time early on. Yeah, I mean now that he's got all of the cards that really matter with your hand size. Yeah. I mean, Palmlet has to avoid that at all costs because he has the hellfire to clear, wow. but at some point it gets really iffy. Look at this. I mean, yeah, already you now you're in a bind where you're like, shoot, do I do I just giant? And I mean, 
Hellfire gets you even lower, too. It gets exactly. you down to that 15 mark, which is a bit scary if you go below that and you don't have anything to taunt up your Molten Giants. Luckily for him, he does, but it's an interesting position. That's a lot of early damage coming in from time. You know, and one of the, I think one of the biggest reasons why this, you know, the original style of Handlock has kind of basically just been modified into a later style of Demon Lock is uh -huh. because that even if you have all these giants, nowadays people are playing so many styles that kind of just negate them right away. I mean, everyone's yeah. playing a big game hunter because of Dr. Boom. You know, I feel like Palmblad is almost falling into the same trap that Arena Hour did, you know, having this yes. older school Handlock deck today. Oh. <laughs> This guy, uh, had, they had a company dinner with his boss, but oh, he skipped yeah. that to come watch this. And nice. so he's going to go into just overtime work afterwards, going back into the office at night. <laughs> Fight the power, or uh, at least make up the power <laughs> later. Hellfire, I suppose you got to do it. Yeah, I think that right now is the best choice. But here's here's the thing, right? I mean, mages are running mirror entity. Uh, obviously, mid-range hunters are coming back, and they're running freezing trap. Yeah. At which point, your giants, like, it feels really bad to play them. Yeah, I think, and, and I... I wrote a little bit about this in the article that we put up on uh, the on Game Net website this week, where I think outside of the handlock mirror match, yes. I really do favor the uh, the little demon core handlock right now in uh, in the meta. You know, using those void callers, using the uh, dread infernal, just to get a little bit more mid game presence. Because otherwise, you have situations like this where you just take a lot of damage early on, and it's not a lot you can do. I mean, to be fair, you still can't play a void caller until turn four anyway. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it's a, it's a tough situation to be in. So now what are we going to see? Maybe just Lothep coming down to guarantee a bit more damage? Is he just going to just gonna go for it, maybe? I think I think if your time... Hmm, it's, it's iffy, because it's very tempting to just try to race him now. Yeah, it is. Uh, but considering he's only played the Mountain Giant, you got to assume he's at least got a taunt in there. I mean, the nice thing, though, for Hunter is that uh, hero power exists, so yeah, you can always get around those taunts a bit, but not attacking is probably the prudent thing to do at this point. I think that was very smart. And then you can just taunt here and not attack, yeah. I think you can get your Sun Fury back. So while we've you know <laughs> we've discussed all of this, Palmland has played this out very well. Yeah, it's a battle of not attacking now. Yeah. And and really here the biggest thing was Palmblad made the right choice to help our early. Um, you know, even if that brought out the secrets. One of the big tricks to sort of beating this hunter with handlock is to attack into freezing traps with your taunt givers. And we've seen that yeah. before in tournaments. And it's a good way not only to use that trap, but also to give yourself the ability to continue taunting things up, even if it is a little bit less mana efficient. And it looks like he's going to get that Sun Fury Protector right back. Yeah, and he'll get a bigger Twilight Drake too. Yeah, true. What's he going to do? Oh, okay, going for the cycle first. All right, fair Might enough. as well. Might as well. Savannah's eventful. Yep, good to get rid of that, I think. The All tricky right. part is that if you attack into the Savannah high main, then your mountain giant dies to explosive trap. So it's, well, I mean, if you do it first, then it just goes back to your hand. But, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What? Uh, hmm. Uh, so he might just not attack. Again, I, I, I guess. guess so, yeah. Okay. Not attacking. Oh, okay. All right. You know, I mean, nothing terribly wrong with that, actually. He's still got the Defender of Argus in his hand, so he still can kind of wait a little bit. Yeah. It's not like he needs that taunt back. It's going to be Unleash the Hounds. We'll see where the knives end up falling. A lot of help to soak these up. And only one going to face. <laughs> None on the giant either. He was probably looking for two on the giant there to get maximum yeah. damage on the board. But he's going to have to use his hands. Now, it's with both mad scientists going down, is it still the leftmost trap that activates first, right? So yes. if he attacks in with his Sunfury Protector, it'll get Freezing Trap before the Explosive Trap can kill it. It should. Because the Freezing Trap is the one on the left right now. Yes. Where is that Soul Fire? <laughs> <laughs> And he can just run two of these into the Mountain Giant. Looks like he might just play the Creeper too, so yeah. he only needs to use one. Wow, only one, or actually nine, none of these arrows have hit the Mountain Giant. They've hit everything else. I guess so, yeah. And you know, do at this you point even you want to go in hell? Yeah. yeah. I think so too, because again, 
If that gets freezing trap, then you can just reuse it. All right. Well, you can you can play the same game again and just like taunt up forever. Yeah, he can try to hold out until he gets the shadow flame I, here. You know, I would have liked to see Pombla try to just activate the traps earlier with the Sun Fury Protector. I mean, because you're gonna have to do it at some point. You can't. You can't like. I I agree. I think that one turn where he decided not to attack when he played the tri yeah. Twilight Drake, I think that would have been a, a good opportunity. There's potentially all three traps now. Yeah. I mean, so, the good news there is that you know that all three are there. Yeah, but you don't know what order they're in. Fair. So that that does change things a little bit. Actually, quite frankly, when you know that they have all three kinds and you've already seen two, you just have to play as if one of them is Snake Trap and should always test for face. No. True. Just run into it. Down to nine health. Palmblad's got to get something going here. Yeah, see, this gave time that exact work. Cause you see oh, oh wow. anti kill bot. Nice draw there. All right, well, he's super happy, but for how long, right? I mean. Uh, we will see. It looks like all the traps are going to go off, except for Snake Trap here. All right. Freezing Trap. And I believe this still does pop the explosive trap. Yeah. Yes, it does. It does activate it. There we go. Okay, okay, so that's out of the way. So he knows the last one remaining is Snake Trap because it's probably not going to be uh, Snipe. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Hasn't played it yet. Yeah. Uh, snake Trap's still in hand, but he knows one's coming at some point. Now. I think you just heal and defender again? Yeah. Only include the heal bot with that one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah, and then you do it uh, between the heal bot and the Drake to give him more health. Although it still would be susceptible to kill command, so. I wonder if he's going to do it between the giant just to make sure that time has to use his hyena to kill it. Um, okay. Also, just do more damage. I mean, considering he attacked with the Drake first, I'm assuming that's what was going to happen. That. Although, I personally, I actually see your point. I'm kind of more in agreement with uh, putting it on the Drake. Because it still wouldn't have been 7 health, so it wouldn't have gotten BGH. Yeah. Uh, but either way, what happened happened. He still got 10 damage onto the face with the Molten Giant. So. Yep. I think BGH was already used this game, too. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I guess that's why maybe he was there. I might as well make the Giant bigger. It's a pack of hyenas. It's a lot of hyenas. Now it's less of a pack. It's 75% of the previous <laughs> pack. All right, well. This is such a tight game right now. It is. I think uh, you just got. I think you clear the Drake with face, quite frankly. Yeah. Five damage. You go down to twelve when there's six. Well, and then you clear. Oh, you can, huh? Okay. Well, you could clear all of it if you clear the Drake with face. You can clear the rest. Well, right. The those hangers just came out, so you can't. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're I right. I was missing that in the oh, yeah, yeah. too, but. Sleeping hyenas. <laughs> And there's a the snake trap. They look pretty wide awake to me, man. Their eyes are glowing. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of creepy. Maybe they sleep with their eyes open. Oh. Now that's creepy. <laughs> My dog does that sometimes. Oh, wow. Ancient Watcher. That's actually a, a pretty nice draw. Yeah, in this matchup. I mean, especially because you have that second defender in your hand. Yeah. Okay. You could well, also uh, do Lothab with that as well, too. Very true. Yeah. Could just go Lothab Sludge Belcher as well. Yeah, at this point, the Belcher's better. He's wondering what that trap is, though. Well, okay, unless he's did running four traps. Well, did he see Snake Trap last game they played in the Hunter vs. Hunter? I'm trying I, to I forget now. if it was activated, but it was all three were definitely on the board. Yeah. So. Yeah, I do like the load up here. And generally, you're not going to see more than three traps. So. Yeah. Testing for face, and he says, hey, I've got so many taunts. Why do I even need to attack you? Or attack your minions, rather. And yeah. suddenly this game looking very much in Palmblad's favor. Maybe not quite suddenly. Either way, it's looking pretty good for Handlock at the moment. Can he, uh, all right, well, he can. Oh, actually. Huh. Man, freezing trap on taunt givers is so good for Handlock. Yeah, that really kind of turned things around here. I mean, they're really hellfire to getting a freezing trap. You see it all the time in this matchup. All right. Okay. Jungle Stalker. Or Jungle Panther. 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 Jungle Panther. Jungle Stalker sounds cooler, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. I was just thinking, like, oh, that's pretty cool. You're name. welcome, Blizzard. You can change the <laughs> name anytime you want. Oh, man. Well, I think you, Ancient of 
Uh, Ancient of uh, Ancient Watcher and then yeah, Defender. Yeah, that pretty much secures the game for you. Yep. Yeah, you can silence the Leper Gnome as well too if you want to. <laughs> Why not? Just reduce any amount of damage they can possibly do to you. And this game is looking pretty locked up for Palmblad. Yeah, the even five hounds will not help. Yeah. GG. That's 12 health to get through. Yeah, so I don't think that time is going to be able to do it. In fact, no, he can't. Palmblad is well going to go up 2-1. Well played. Was not a fluke that he won his round of 16. Palmblad looks so relieved. I mean, yeah, you, you never know what's coming, but. Oh, it's so true. I mean, Hunter has that way of kind of bringing the damage out of nowhere, so. Yeah, but very well played. I mean, things looked like maybe he got a little bit greedy with his hand earlier, but I really like the uh, Hellfire choice there instead of, you know, the Drakes or the Giants early on. I mean, what other options do you really have, you know? When you're when you're going into a, a game like that, you know yeah. you have to just kind of tap so you can get that mountain giant out, so you can get the the big twilight drakes. All right, it's a so. risky matchup, but worked out that time for Palmblad. He's one game away from moving on to the winners match. Yeah, just his druid left. Yeah. Now time has to fight against the druid with all three of his decks. And we still haven't seen the paladin. Or two too. decks rather. I'm sure the paladin. We still haven't seen the paladin too, so I'm really wondering what's really wondering what's in that one. I don't know. We'll see if he brings it out this time. He already lost twice with his hunter, so just for you know focus sake, he might just try to switch things up for the paladin. Let's find out in set number four between Time and Pomblad. Both players are ready now, so we'll be jumping right into that game. Pomblad's Druid. What will Time bring out? Let's find out. It's going to be Paladin. Sweet. I was hoping we'd get to see yeah, this. Yeah, me too. And Paladin does oftentimes match up quite well against Druid. I mean, equality is such a huge card in this matchup. Yeah. As, as is uh, um, Elder Peacekeeper, too. Yeah. Just really good natural tech cards against Druid, and also just yeah. so many ways to climb back into the game. Okay. Not a bad, uh, not a bad curve starting out. Yeah, I mean, the Tyrion's going to kind of hang around, but aside from that, actually pretty solid. Yeah. Time looks like he's pretty mm. happy with how that happened. Uh, not so ideal with Pomblet, but at least he has the shade. Yeah, could have really used a little bit of ramp here. Maybe he'll get to draw one next turn. But even then, I mean, you really want that to be able to innervate out that shade early on. But now at the same see. time, Pomblet does have another chance if he loses this one. So no need to fret too much about a mulligan you can't control anymore. True enough. All right, oh, muster for battle. It's a really good curve. Yeah. yeah, probably coin muster, elder or whatever comes out. There's the innervate. Okay, it's a little bit mana inefficient. You might just hero power here. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. And and I think even, you do yeah, even next turn it gets a little iffy, right? Because you're like, well, I want to get that shade out pretty fast. Yeah, he's not going to this time though. Because uh, we'll see. Might just want to. Although if he innervates out that uh, Drew the Claw, he's going to be very sad. The elder peacekeeper shows up. Yeah. Oh, just going for the hero power. Gonna save the coin. Fair enough. Yep. Might as well. Yeah, because the elder is a situational card. You can't rely on that being played again. And if you play muster for battle on curve like this, then you have the chance to coin into a quartermaster. Very true. Uh, if it comes out. And with this, I mean, and you just kind of cross your fingers and hope they don't have a swipe, of course. But <laughs> we'll see. All right. So is it just gonna be the shade here? Hmm. Hmm, everyone's safe. <laughs> um, I'm okay with that. It's such a slow start for Palmblad, either way, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and again, he knows that if he innervates out something larger, there's a, a hmm. fairly good chance that it's just going to get Elder Peacekeeper. It's just a good matchup for Paladin. It is. Generally, pretty good matchup. Yeah. You got to beat it, though. Maybe, I mean, if, okay, if you innervate, would you go with the Druid of the Claw or the Snake Uh, I mean, Druid would really draw out that Elder Peacekeeper, but yeah. I think the Sludge Belcher is a little bit better to save, so he's going to go ahead and play it too. All right. All right. Oh, oh, wow. Remember what I said <laughs> about the Muster for Battle and then Coining Out Quartermaster? Huh. Now time is like, okay. 
please no swipe, please no swipe. But he can't, uh, doing this means he can't Elder Peacekeeper yeah. the Druid. I say you go for it anyway, man. I, I say you do too, because it'll probably prioritize the Zombie Chow first. Although generally, you, now you want to get rid of the tokens too. It's a big risk though, you know, because if you go for it and they have a swipe, you've really given up quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you've given up your entire board, essentially. And you have a 4-6 that's been, uh, you know, untouched. But uh, if you don't go for it, then you can develop your board a little bit. Yeah, I think this but is you a have little to bit wait. better. It's certainly safer. Yeah, just wait one more turn. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, though, if they don't have swipe now, you know, there's only a better chance that they're going to draw it in future turns. Fair. So it's, you know, the, it's only more likely that they have swipe as the game goes on. But well, so far, no it swipe. Ultra safe. So far, no swipe. Yeah. Do you wild growth and hero power here? Because, I mean, the only turn six you have right now is force of nature. But at the same time, the shade's not really doing too much immediately on the board. Yeah, you might just want to do that. Because then you can clear the 1-1 one, one with your hero power and make sure that the druid doesn't die to just the elder peacekeeper next turn. Yeah. So you can at least get a little bit of damage done to things. Hmm. All right, well. Might as well get the shade out too, actually. Yeah, well, if I he gets the shade out, if in palm blast shoes, right, you're thinking like, well, maybe that can just draw to early consecrate, because um, that's like the easiest way to get rid of the shade, obviously, uh -huh. until you have the equality combo later. Um, so that could, you know, maybe slow down times, play a little bit, but time would still have a superior board. At the same time, if consecrate doesn't come out, he could start building that shade up. So let's see where this goes. Doctor Boom. Well, this is, I think, pretty straightforward. I would say so. Kyle the Shredder is a pretty strong card right now. Yeah. At yep. this point, you you basically said, I'm going to give up on the Muster for Battle combo until later in the game. Yep, you can do it on turn 7 with the coin or just turn 8 normally. Yeah, this. So he's got a, huh. he's got a really strong like turn seven on basically yeah he's, he's got the combo he's got dr boom he's got Tyrion. Looking pretty good yeah time oh love wow. that fits things, right in there things are going really well for him i mean a lot of times you might want to try to save that lotha for a later turn to deny lethal from the druid but hmm. five Actually, five on the board might be nice yeah it is a little bit interesting though because the shade will get up to four damage next turn. That's true. And then you can't kill the Sludge Belcher with the Lothab right away. So it could just, you know, I think if you're Pomblad, if he puts the Lothab on, you're like, all right, I'll just trade it with face. Hmm. Not a big issue. At the same time, what else are you going to use? I mean, I guess you would True Silver. Yeah. I mean, nothing's really efficient this turn. Yeah. Not the greatest. Having having talked through it, I think true silver and just you know even if it's not so efficient and then just clearing with the weapon plus Aldor, uh, the first set and then clearing the token with the shredder is a little bit better. It might seem to do that. You gotta make a decision. Oh, okay. Oh, and then just the muscle for battle for the one attack. Okay. I guess so. And again, you cross your fingers and hope they don't have swipe. Right now, Pomblad crossing his fingers and hoping he draws swipe. Yeah, because this is a super swipe ready board. Yes, it is. All right. Is he going to get swipe? Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's Azure Drake. That's not exactly what he wants here. All right, well. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you a force of nature, man? I mean, it's, oh. it's so risky to leave those silver hand recruits on the board. The dudes, oh, the man dudes. Some scary Everyone. dudes. Yeah. Everyone's got one ones that you're Everyone's about. like, man, I'm glad I don't have to be that guy right now. <laughs> That's a tough choice to make, man. That's really wow. hard. I mean, with the turn he played it on, he has such a big hand. You know he's got lots of other ways to deal with what you had on the board. The fact that he went for that really should scream that there's a quartermaster in the hand, and I think it's absolutely the right choice. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, you, I think you have to. You said to bite the bullet. Yep. And go for it. Now, do you just clear all four tokens? Yes. Personally, I agree. I think you do. Because the thing is, is if you don't, if you say clear the keeper instead, the elder peacekeeper instead, then he's going to have a three three instead of a three one. So. Uh, oh, go for the token. Kill the token. You don't want to give.
give him a 3-3 three, three instead of a 3-1. Kill. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you committed this much. Kill the token. Oh, my. Oh, see? And this is why you threw the token, because now, essentially, he has traded for a 3-1 uh, for a 3-3. Three, three. So this is good for for time if he decides to go for, like, hero power quartermaster, but probably not going to do that. Either way, well, eventually you'd think that's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. But for now, it's just going to be <laughs> Dr. Boom showing up. Yeah, I mean, you know, at, at that point, if he's cleared that much, you're like, all right, well, I've traded a three mana spell for a six mana spell. Ah, oh, it's a, another boom off. We've been seeing this a lot. <laughs> this time, the Dr. Boom on the Paladin side has friends, though. It matters quite a bit. It does. Watch, he uh, attacks into it, the Mad Scientist, and then it pops up that he's got Avenge in the deck. Like, <laughs> no, what? Yeah, I think he's quartermaster so. here. That'll guarantee that they survive a little bit more. Some survivability here. Yeah, I'm just trading the Dr. Boom. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think you just go for phase here. I don't yeah. think you want to go into any of the boom bots. Yeah. Oh. Okay, oh. with phase? Okay. Chain reaction. Although he didn't nope. attack with... Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. Bombs, bombs, chain reactions. Okay. Oh, that All is right. six damage. Yeah, that... The face of Palmblad. One of the better ways that could have ended for time. Yeah, it worked out okay. So, I mean, he's... What is it? 10 damage on board. Uh, 14 if you include the weapon. Yeah, if you draw... If he pulls out the True Silver next turn. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Hmm. Could end up very well. Or very low, rather. Not very well. <laughs> hmm. And you can't cycle this Wrath very well. Yeah, you'd have to use it on the scientist with the spell power, but oh yeah, you're right. Your ideal target is the three threes. I think you do actually do it on the three three. Then. Looks like he's going to. Oh no, he just went for the token. You know, I'm yeah. agree I'm in agreement with you that the cycle would have helped a lot, but at the same time, I think he just doesn't want to deal with any secrets at this point. I guess you just want to reduce all the damage you can. Well, I really yeah. doubt the time has any secrets in his deck, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, because he got that out of out of a uh, yeah, exactly. shredder and everything, but he just wants to reduce as much damage as he can, you know, coming out of time. It's Tyrion though, and even with the silence, potentially coming in for Palmblad, that's still a six-six on the board. Lots of damage. Yep, and he's just gonna run into that for, with face. Oh dear! All right, still ten plus the weapon. Force of nature. Um, so that's, well, it's not a game if he heals. No. So you have to heal. Well, even if he does heal, it's not going to really get him into a much better position here. Uh, well, that is game. I believe so, because it is, yeah, 10 on the board, and then we've got that weapon in the hand. So easy win here for time on this final turn. It's take a lot to figure this one out. Yeah, just thinking it through one last time. Yep. And then he will have lethal here a little bit over. So that means we are going to game number five here in our second best of five of the night. It's going to be a hunter versus druid. All right, mid-range hunter versus the druid we just saw from Palmblad. So time yep. bringing it back to set five. Pretty interesting matchup between yeah. these two players. And remember, the, the winner goes on to our, uh, well, winner's match next yes. match. And the loser is not out yet, still gets to come back and play in the loser's match tomorrow for a final chance at survival. Exactly. So what you see today, these none of these players are completely knocked out today. We'll only know for sure which um, you know players or one player moving on. Yeah, either way, you don't want to be that guy that has to come back and play again tomorrow. No, it doesn't feel too good. So time and Pomplet, both are ready. No deck choices to be made here. Just got to gather their focus as they decide who will go to face Flurry in the winner's match next. Let's jump right into set number five between Time and Palmblad here in the quarterfinals, our second week of the quarterfinals here at Masters Korea Season 1. We already know what the classes are. Hunter versus Druid here in our final game between Time and Palmblad. 
Yeah, Times Hunter, we've already seen it twice. And it's lost both times, so. Chobra, you need to promise me that if time, like, goes to the losers match tomorrow and then loses, you're not going to let me make a we're all out of time joke. Promise me you won't <laughs> let me do that. All right. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'll be aware. I just wanted to have, like, a safety net in case I felt tempted. <laughs> I know you got my back. All right, man. No worries. All right, no reason to coin out the wild growth since you've got no play follow. Yeah, nothing to play from time side either. That feels kind of bad. Yeah, well, he's got a bit of room to work with, but uh, still, this is a slow start, no doubt about it. Yeah, might as well. Again, Palm Blad knows that you've got got all three types of secrets here coming out from time. Yeah. So coin into Sludge Belcher. The thing you're really worried about on turn four against Druids nowadays is the Innervate and Denver Tharzan. Yeah. That's nice to have the Freezing Trap for. Or a Kill Command and a Beast. <laughs> That's nice too. All right. Now, do you, I think since it's a taunt, you just, you just hold off on attacking with that at this point. You could. Yeah, I think you just Wrath it. Um, see what you get. You might even be able to cycle off of the token that comes out. Or just your power at that point. Oh, okay. Oh, Iron Beak Owl. Not the strongest thing ever. You can just kill that with zero power. Yeah, the big question here. Do you do you hear power or do you cycle? Since you don't have any minions. It feels bad to use two Wraths on one minion. You know, yeah, that, and that's the thing. I, I think when you've got the health, you've got the chance, yeah, he is just going to hero power it. Because you want to be able to give yourself more options, right? I mean, every decision you make should be about giving yourself more, as many options as you can. So saving that wrath Whoa. lets him do that later on. He's just going to go to face to test for Explosive Trap because if okay. it popped, it meant he could have cleared the Owl and still had a 3-1 Belcher out. But now he knows, uh, he's pretty sure that it's freezing. He also didn't want to activate Snake Trap as well. So yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So that was a good test. So now he knows it's either Snake or Freezing. Oh wow! So I guess I guess he will wrap it then. Yeah, but with an innervate too. So he committed a lot into testing. Basically, all he did was negate one trap. Well, there's a combo. A there's a combo, and he does have an extra force of nature for any sort of big board clear that he might need too. So that's actually kind of nice to have that in hand going into turn number six. Yeah, running the full du double combo druid deck. Yeah. Time, time. I mean, Pretty you know, good. it's been really good for Pomblet too because time on the flip side also doesn't have any minions he can play. This is I, very. This has actually been a really odd game. Yeah, it's not what you expect to see from either of these classes. It's a bit uh, more slow paced than we normally see. Yeah, which generally you would say favors the druid here, but yeah. so if I'm time, uh, I. I would actually consider getting a little bit greedy and silencing that and just killing you with Kill Command, hmm. trying to take over the board. Really? Because it's just going to sit there. Like, you know he's not going to attack with you because he did it last turn. Okay, he's going to go for it. All right. And he did use both Wraths, so he's going to have to Hero Power if he wants to get rid of it, which that is true. two mana. <laughs> Big Game Hunter, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> no, that's, that's not the game he's looking for. Yeah, you need heaven for that. Ooh, <laughs> there. Yeah, that's true. There is Emperor Tharzan. I'm a Nessing Worry. <laughs> what, a, what a not good legendary card. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, because he's such a cool character in World of Warcraft. Yeah, he just he just wants to enjoy the thrill of the hunt, man. Yeah. Too bad he's not hunting big game. Well, Emperor Tharzan, I mean, you do make a lot of chunks of the combo quite a bit less expensive. You will be able to trade that with the Savannah High Mate, I would imagine. And having seen a kill command used, too, you're a little bit less worried about that, but perhaps clearing here would be stronger. There's a freezing okay. trap. Okay, tested it with the Azure. Okay. And this will be nice because he's going to make the freezing trap to Azure Drake cheaper as well, too. Yeah. A little bit anyway. All right. What's it going to be? A second, a second kill command would be pretty nice. But it's a lever gnome. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he can still clear it with the the weapon of the owl, though. Yeah, just gonna keep his Savannah High Man alive as much as possible. Now that poses a pretty big threat. Sure does. Yeah. Yeah, the Kesem Mystic also just uh, you know you can just put it down as a four three. No tech here for the Druid. Well, it's been said before that uh, if the Savannah High Man gets to hit face once, Hunter has like an exponentially better chance of winning the game. <laughs> yeah. 
because then that means you know you just can't deal with it. Ooh. So, okay. Yeah. Just wants to clear. He's just gonna oh, go to face okay. man. Oh yeah, because he's got the full combo next turn, and then he's got the shape. Oh boy. That's actually all right. Oh boy. He set it up. Yeah, and the problem is that his opponent's got an explosive trap in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't gonna work this time. Oh man, yeah, time, time smiling. He's like, oh, I, I see, I see what you did there. He can charge in. Uh, well, Palmblad can charge into the, the Druid of the Claw next turn to test it. Fair, but he doesn't have the mana then that uh, turn, right? He gives another. What damage does he have too? He's got 13 damage. His opponent have, would have eight Wait. yet. Oh, huh. on the flip side. Yeah, you may want to drop that Mad Scientist as well, too. You have I 13 mean, damage on board right now. Well, I think it's, well, you just go for the face, obviously, yeah. but you must play the Explosive Trap. You have well, to. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, you you have to read that. I mean, when you see just face from a Druid, I mean, you know he's setting up. Yeah, and uh, I would say just Hero Power here, drop the Leper Gnome. And you don't need to go for face yet. There's no... Big pressing uh, reason for that, unless you want to just go all out. Yeah, I think you just keep it in case you need to get rid of any taunts. Yeah. All right, so throwing the Mad Scientist down. Tests it. So Explosive Trap. Ah. He's still going to get through, though. There yeah. we go. Yeah, just testing it first. That's three damage. Well played. And there goes the combo. Yeah, and it's going to be with the hero power as well, too. So that makes it just exactly lethal. And Paul Blad is going to take this match and moving on and move on to the winners <laughs> match. <laughs> wow, very well played. Um, I mean, yeah, he set it up perfectly so that even with an explosive, he would have had it. Yeah, and it was Palm close. Blad moves on. I mean, this guy he played very cleanly. You know, just well calculated against Rini Hour too. So not surprised. Yeah, Paul Blad certainly looking uh, like one of the better players we've seen so far in this tournament. I do think so. Yeah. And unfortunately for time, he will have to wait until tomorrow to be able to play again in the losers match and see if he can make a run for the final match. But meanwhile, Pomblad will now be preparing for his match against Flurry, which we'll have right after a short break. So don't go anywhere, guys. We're not done yet today. On yeah. Mondays now, we will have an extra match for the winner's match. Golden Coin versus the team that took a lot of Golden Coin's best players. Oh, that's true. Yep. Oh, there, yeah, there's some beef here in this matchup. Flurry versus Pomblad. They're both like somewhat of like the tier two players from both teams that are now rising to the top. <laughs> so That's we'll see. Right. Um, we'll see how this ends up for Pomblad and Flurry. Time, unfortunately, just looking a little bit defeated, but he'll have his chance tomorrow. So if anyone wants to see more times play, you can see it tomorrow. But right now, short break. Then we'll be back for Flurry versus Pomblad to determine the first person that makes it to the semifinals on this side of the bracket, don't go anywhere. <laughs> 